Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about The Hobbit and the Battle of the Five Armies. Here we come to the conclusion of the trilogy where Thorne and company reclaim their homeland, but at the expense of Lake Town. Lake Town has been attacked by Smaug, and the people within it are desperate as they look to Erebor for promised wealth to rebuild their home. Gandalf's quest comes to a sudden halt. He then turns his attention back to the dwarves to inform them about Azog the Defiler's advancement to the Lonely Mountain. Even Thranduil, Legolas's father, comes in claiming his riches within Erebor. It has all now come to this. There's only one problem. Thorin is overcome with what is known to be Dragon Sickness, where he slowly deepens into madness. Bilbo, who has already found the Arkenstone, is keeping his findings under wraps in hopes to Thorin's recovery. This third and final installment is the most oddly paced and weirdest finale I have ever seen in my entire life. The theatrical edition of this film was so devoid of any properly timed finality, it awkwardly placed you in this limbo that kind of robbed you of cathartic expectations. I'll admit this, that the theatrical aversion does get us quick to the point, the action beats get to where they need to be, and it does wrap up nicely, leading directly into Lord of the Rings, but as a finale itself? Meh. Somewhat. This does not justify false deaths leading to surprising ones, forced romances that don't exist and was not properly handled, and now at this point where I forgave the shoddy dialogue, it's hardly forgivable. By this point, if I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to get into some spoilers, so if you haven't watched it up until this point, do you really care? In the theatrical version, things get to where they need to be. Gandalf's storyline wraps up pretty quickly over the rise of Sauron for him to go back and join the dwarves. Not to say that this reunion with the dwarves isn't without reason, but the reasons form more into potent desires as Thorin proves to be a conflict along with Thranduil, Legolas' father, where claims are kind of just going all over the place. When Bilbo and Gandalf reunite, they're kind of joined more than just a, hey, I have information, and hey, I've done a thing. This is another good portion of the film where all motives are clear. We reach the final defense and final battle for everyone over the riches in Erebor and Azog the Defiler's force to destroy Thorin. Azog isn't a character I really covered all that much in these last two reviews, and I'm going to mention him now, but I have to inform you that he really hasn't done anything for me as a character. Sure, Thorin and Azog have had past dealings in the history of Middle-earth before and during the events of The Hobbit, and he proves to be an intimidating threat and formidable foe for Thorin. But in all honesty, he doesn't reach out to me as the next best memorable villain. There are things that irritated me, and to get into that, it ranges from dialogue, pacing, and the scenes cut from the theatrical edition left in the extended edition. Buckle up, you're going to be in for one wild ride. It starts with dialogue, and it begins with pointless and useless platitudes when someone doesn't want to do something. No, you must go with your people. They need you. Yeah. No shit. That kind of talk is just peppered throughout this movie, and that's not the only crime. It's just the best example I can give you. To continue with pacing, mixed with dialogue, I would like to direct you to the Hobbit trailer. There is a moment that swells up the excitement and brings about a certain intensity. In the trailer, Keeley states, I will not hide when others fight our battles for us! This is the swelling of tension in the trailer, giving you the understanding of immediacy, knowing these dwarves are being prevented from joining the battle. More than likely, Keeley is talking to Thorin, who he can assume is just too far gone. This feels like the moment where Thorin will snap out of it after this speech. Um, no. Spoilers, like I said. Um, Th Thorin, at this point, already had his spiritual awakening. And Keeley is just yelling because he has no idea. Ah! If nothing else, it just comes off as awkward. All right, let's say that none of this matters to you. You can get past the awkward pacing. You can get past the dummy dialogue. But how are the battles? Maybe you're asking that. Maybe you're like, hey, you can't go wrong with battles. This is one big giant fight sequence between Erebor and the city and, you know, all that stuff, right? Right? The beginning of the, the fight is fine, 
But I, I will say that there were some moments of tension that were coming up. You were just like, ooh, okay, this is thickening the plot a little bit. Dane, who is Thorin's cousin, comes in and kind of complicates things. Only problem is no conflict is shown and only told as they just kind of spat out insults to one another. In the theatrical version, Dane honestly proves to be an obstacle only for the where, 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 what are they? Wereworms. To crash the party before any conflict happens. The reason why I'm upset? In the extended edition, the dwarves and elves execute their strategies towards one another. I mean, they get into it before they are interrupted. And this, this is the biggest crime for me. That the extended scenes that should have been in the theatrical, this was the most prominent thing that stood out to me. And the fact that the battle between dwarves and elves were cut. And if you would like to know what else was cut out, I'll give you a hint. A lot of those entertaining aspects of uh, the battle, they were cut out. If I were to show a friend this trilogy, I would go as far as to say I would show them the regular versions of Unexpected Journey and Desolation of Smog. And then, when it comes to the Battle of the Five Armies, I'd go straight into the Extended Edition. That's the best I can do. I don't hate this movie, extended or theatrical, but much of it felt rushed, and that's not to say there isn't great moments. Just feels like this journey that we have seen come to a finality of romance, it just doesn't quite work. The dramatic beats of revenge, joy, and sorrow, and even tense anticipation become short-lived, only to realize things were allowed to breathe in the same movie, just in the extended version. And this, these trilogies are known for that. Either way, I'm going to divide this into two categories. I disliked the theatrical version of The Hobbit, but generally would own on DVD. And trust me, that's a rarity to have such a rating. Feels very self-serving though. But I liked the extended version of The Hobbit and own it on DVD as well. Okay, either I need to really work on those ratings or this all makes sense to you somehow, some way. This is hurting my brain. It was an odd movie for me, and rea in reality, I'm pretty sure this was an odd review for you. I did not have a good time recording this. Ugh. With all that said, I thank you all so much for watching. If you've seen The Hobbit and The Battle of the Five Armies, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable and let's talk. Like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss another video. With all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Until next time.